My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiology resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Postoperative nausea and vomiting, or PONV, is not only really unpleasant for patients, but can actually pose serious health risks after surgery. In this video, I explain why PONV is such a problem and what it is that anesthesiologists can do to treat it, including a promising medication called amisulpride that has been making headlines recently. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's dive in. Just a reminder that this video does not constitute medical advice. It's just a YouTube video. If you need medical advice, talk to your doctor. Probably the most obvious reason why post-operative nausea and vomiting is a problem is because it's just really subjectively unpleasant for patients. And as a doctor on the healthcare team that's looking after a patient, I wanna make sure the patient is as comfortable as possible. But one of the more serious health risks that's especially pertinent in the perioperative period, meaning before, during, or immediately after surgery, is something called aspiration. In short, aspiration is when gastric contents come up from the stomach and then go into the lungs. That can actually be a life-threatening condition and is something that anesthesiologists take really seriously. I actually made a separate video that goes into a lot more detail about aspiration if you wanna watch that by clicking the link right here. One of the reasons why a patient may be at an increased risk of aspiration in the perioperative period is because they likely have been receiving sedating medications like many of the drugs that are used in anesthesiology. Some of these medications have the potential to blunt a person's airway reflexes, which are the natural reflexes that people have that prevent anything from going down the wrong pipe, meaning into the trachea and then going into the lungs. A specific example of a situation to be avoided is a patient who leaves the operating room and goes to the post-anesthesia care unit or PACU and becomes very sedated in PACU has an episode of vomiting, but doesn't have their airway reflexes intact and ends up aspirating some of that vomit. This is part of the reason why when we're waking patients up from anesthesia, we ensure that they have their airway reflexes intact before we remove an endotracheal tube, which can protect from aspiration because it has an inflatable plastic balloon at the end of it. One of the highest risk scenarios that we have with regard to post-operative aspiration is a patient who had their jaw wired shut during surgery. In that case, we actually keep a pair of wire cutters immediately available next to the patient's bed in case they start vomiting, in which case we can cut the wires and make sure that nothing goes down the wrong pipe. One of the other really significant health concerns posed by PONV during or after surgery is the fact that if someone is throwing up, then when they're bearing down, the amount of increased venous pressure that they cause throughout their body, and particularly the upper part of their body, can lead to ruptured suture lines. This is particularly problematic for any surgeries that take place on blood vessels themselves, for example, any kind of vascular surgery, or any surgeries in the head or neck where the suture lines would be particularly susceptible to the increased pressure from someone who's bearing down. The risk factors for post-operative nausea and vomiting have been very extensively studied. Some of the risk factors are unfortunately not modifiable, like gender, age, and a history of having post-operative nausea and vomiting. Interestingly, there are certain types of surgeries that pose a higher risk of post-operative nausea and vomiting compared to other types of surgeries. Some of the modifiable risk factors actually have to do with the anesthesiologist's choice about what is administered during surgery. One of the major risk factors is the use of volatile anesthetic or an inhaled anesthetic. However, I will just say that that is not a reason to avoid volatile anesthetics altogether. Every medication that we administer comes with pros and cons, and those all have to be weighed against each other. But for a patient who has a high risk of post-operative nausea and vomiting, I'm more likely to avoid giving any sort of volatile anesthetic. Because of the number of potential health consequences of post-operative nausea and vomiting, anesthesiologists are unsurprisingly very invested in trying to prevent it as much as possible. We routinely administer medications with anti-emetic properties, and actually a number of medications that are very commonly used for anesthesia have anti-emetic properties with them. That includes propofol, which is used very commonly, as well as an anxiolytic called midazolam, which is commonly administered preoperatively to help patients feel relaxed. 
It's also very routine to administer a steroid called dexamethasone, which not only has antimetic properties, but can help with some of the throat soreness that can be associated with endotracheal intubation. I should point out that dexamethasone is best given immediately after induction of general anesthesia because it can cause some pretty uncomfortable side effects if someone is awake. It might not be appropriate for me to say on my YouTube channel, but you can look them up and it shouldn't be that hard to find. And another medication that's routinely administered towards the end of surgery is called Ondansetron, which is often known by its trade name Zofran. What happens if a patient has post-operative nausea and vomiting and I've already given prophylactic antiemetics? An important principle of giving rescue antiemetics is to try something from a different class of medications that has already been administered because, of course, those aren't working as well as they need to. The latest newsletter from the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation brought to my attention a medication called amisulpride, which has recently been FDA approved for post-operative nausea and vomiting treatment. Amisulpride has actually been around for a while, and it's in a class of medications called antipsychotics. There are some antipsychotics that have some concerning side effect profiles, which is why they're no longer routinely used to treat PONV. But the Food and Drug Administration in the United States approved amisulpride for the treatment of PONV because it doesn't have the same concerning side effect profile, especially central nervous system effects, that other antipsychotics might have. Initial studies on amisulpride show that it's safe and effective for the treatment of PONV, but there are more studies that are needed to give us a sense of just how well it compares to other antiemetics. If you'd like to read more about amisulpride or other important developments in the field of anesthesiology, check out the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation newsletter. The APSF is a nonprofit organization that has played a critical role in some of the most important patient safety developments in anesthesiology, and it's a great source of information for patients and healthcare providers alike. I've put a link in the description below if you want to check out their website and sign up for the newsletter. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video where I go through some of the unexpected reasons why operating rooms are kept cold and how that has to do with patient safety. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.